Welcome to the S Word Live! You are in the right place if you are ready to kick doubt and worry to the curb. I am Renee Rebar and I'm a sales strategist, speaker, and author, and I am coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan, and I am ready to help you get rid of the two biggest business killers that I've seen in history. And so if we haven't met yet, I have been selling millions of dollars of products and services and teaching thousands of people how to sell for the first time and consistently since 1994. Um, I remember when I first, hey Wendy, how are you? When I first opened up my first sales office in 1996 on my own, incorporated it, I was so, I was so, I was so amazed at how many women would come into my office and say, this is the first place that I felt like I could actually learn sales. This is the first place where I didn't feel like it was a big old boys club. Hey, nothing against men. I love them. Married one for 20 years. Have a son. My goal here on Planet Internet is to help the women of the world who have skills like Wendy. Wendy's on here live. She has 30 years of experience planning meetings for global companies from Singapore to to the Bay Area and back again. She knows her stuff. She's got like a PhD in travel. The bottom line is, is that when, in, in when you have these skill sets, you've spent your career developing those skill sets. And when you finally decide, you know what, it's that time in my life for whatever reason, maybe it was like me, you know, I, I wanted to be home with Ben or my barking dogs. <laughs> or, you know, maybe for some of my clients, they 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 moved. They moved out of the country. They, they had a husband that got relocated or maybe they got divorced or maybe there was um, a death in the family or an illness in the family or they experienced chronic illness. Whatever it was, they decided to say, you know what, I'm going to try to find a way to create a business. Hang up my own shingle and use those experiences, right? So if you're with me, say hello, whether you're live or on the replay, we're going to talk about the two biggest business killers and how to kick them to the curb right now. But the point is, is that when you decide to hang up your own shingle, oftentimes you haven't ever had to sell for yourself. Say yes in the comments if you were never responsible in your corporate career to bring in the clients. You had the clients, you served the business, you experienced all of the things that you needed to experience to become amazing at what you do. But when you decided to hang up your own shingle, sales was a new part of it. Hey Chandra, how are you? Hey Katie, how are you? Say hello as you join. Tell us where you are on Planet Internet. And please, if you're watching this live or on the replay, click on their profiles. These are amazing and smart women that come to you. Uh, Chandra is a best-selling author. She lives in the West Coast. Um, she is such amazing things that she is bringing to the world that are so important. And so ultimately, I, I, am, I am passionate. I've spent, this morning I spent two days, hey Maggie, another West Coaster. Um, yeah, Wendy's in Cuba, tropical island. <laughs> so I am passionate about helping women kick the things, the two biggest business killers to the curb when it comes to sales in particular. So when I first started my sales office, I was always surprised at how many women were feeling finally for the first time that they could sell. And so when it comes to sales, there are two big, huge, big, fat elephants in the room. And hey, Aurora, how are you? First time hearing you, looking forward. Oh, welcome, welcome. One of my one of my best friend's daughter, her name is Aurora. So I, I, they, they named their kids kind of like where they lived. They lived in Aurora, Illinois. I don't know, maybe where did you get your name from? <laughs> they call her Rory, their daughter, I love it. Okay, so love your name, Aurora. Thank you for listening. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, and it's, it's it, I'm again, I'm passionate about what this is. So when it comes to sales and women specifically, and again, this is not a, a to bash men at all. This is just saying, we have more worry and doubt than most. Um, so, you know, give me a, give me an emoji if you've ever had a little bit of worry and doubt. And so I've been working on something. I've been rereading the book again, feel the fear and do it anyway. Have you ever read that book? Tell me yes in the comments if you have read that book. Um, and it's because I'm really working on more mindset pieces for my clients. So if we haven't met, I work with clients one-on-one -on -one in a corporate level where they sell only to big companies. I work in group environments. I have a mastermind that's starting. And I also have a digital self-study sales course. So in those areas, every single level of sales and how people come to me, I see that they need two very specific sides of sales training. They need the strategic side where they get the, you know, the maps, the templates and all the things that I give them. But then also, and more importantly often, is the mindset, the mentality. And to me, I call that the emotional intelligence side, the, the confidence side, the feeling good about it side. So how do you do that? Katie says, yes, she's read that. Awesome. Hey, Pamela. Hello. Another Detroiter in the house. So 
when I, I'm reading this book and some of the exercises that I've done, and I know Maggie has um, been so kind to tell me about how she felt about these mindset exercises that I've been teaching, is it's, it's, it, it just comes down to this little story that I used to tell a lot of my sales reps, and it's called The Devil's Yard Sale. Tell me if you've ever heard of this story. So the story goes like this. That the, you know, the devil's going out of business, and he lays out all of his tools, and all the bad guys come, and you know, this tool over here is nice and shiny, and it's like a million dollars, and this tool over here is like, you know, it's, it's pretty dinged up, but it's only because it's kind of, you know, been sitting around for a while, a little dusty, a little rusty, and that's like three million, but there's this one piece, this little piece of wood. It's kind of triangle shaped real worked up real kind of gritty it's a billion dollars and so like all the bad guys come in and you know like picture like the Joker and <laughs> whatever it's a historical bad guys there are Darth Vader and they come in Maggie says how the best these minds exercises yes and so the bad guys come in they're like hey you know to the devil they're like why is that piece of wood a billion dollars he's like well honestly it's really the only one I ever used and it's doubt. I just tap it boop, once right into the hearts of those humans and they do the rest. So has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had a little bit of doubt? Like, I, I wonder, you know, I, I wonder if my product is, is going to be good enough because for the first time as an entrepreneur, now that you have all your experience, you decide to put, hang up your own shingle and bring it out to the world. You're like, oh my gosh, my offer's not good enough. My product's not good enough. I'm not experienced enough. Um, I don't want people to think I'm pushing them into buying my thing. And I, I don't want people to think that, you know, this is going to happen or I don't want them to, to promise them the moon, sun and stars. And what if I don't deliver those results? Right? So it comes down to that doubt that we start to place in ourselves when in, tr in, the, in truth and reality you are gonna come through your offer is good the price only has to be acceptable to you and the other person the only thing that has to be on the table is your truth your honesty your integrity your experience and you know when you honestly say those things out loud and you look them in the eye you're like I can answer that. I can figure that out. Chandra says, yes, to, about to start reading The Big Leap. You know, I love that one by Gay Hendricks, right? <laughs> it is really good. Upper limit problems. Oh my gosh, totally. UPL every single day. So I'm reading, I have this little, little notes that I took. So here is kind of the, the five pieces, the five levels that I want you to ask yourself. So one of the things that I, I hear so many of my clients say is, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. So what are you afraid of? What are we afraid of? And I'm going to encourage you to follow along and say this out loud. What am I afraid of? Sometimes they say, you know, I'm afraid that they won't like me. If I go live on Facebook, no one's going to like me. Well, you know what? It's okay to repel. There are many people who see I'm live and swipe what away, right away, and that's okay. That's okay. I'm only here to connect with those who feel compelled, right? Um, what if they don't like me? Okay, so say that out loud. If your kid said to you, he was going, like, I know mine's going to camp next week. He's like, well, what if people don't like me? And I gotta speak low because he can hear me. And I'm like, people are gonna love you, honey. Of course they would. And I know not everyone's gonna love him, but I want him to know, of course he's gonna find a friend. Of course he's gonna find the right person to connect with, right? And sit next to at lunch. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm whispering now. <laughs> Um, another question that people ask is, you know, they ask, like, what am I, like, what if my price isn't good enough? What if, what if it needs to be a different price? What if it needs to be $9.97 or $15.97 or, or $99.97? What is, what is, what if the price is wrong? Well, you know what? The price only has to be acceptable to you and the other person. Again, say this out loud. Say, what if the price is wrong? You can always change it. You're in charge. You don't have to sell someone else's products and services. You are coming to the world with your solutions, with your experience. You package it up, you answer the questions, and you deliver it. And you know that you will always come through. The other questions, and this goes a little bit deeper, is, well, what if they, I come out live and they like me, and then I offer it to them, and it's the right price, and it's the right offer, and then they buy it, but what if I don't get them the results? What if I don't, what if I don't get them the results I promised? Well, here's the thing, you are gonna show up. If the other person shows up too, they will get the results. There's no way that in your own honesty and integrity, you are going to not come through for someone, right? So if you say that out loud, you're like, well, of course that's crazy. So saying it out loud and hearing it from another voice, it helps so much get over that fear of worry and doubt, these two big business killers. So this again, we're going a little bit deeper. The next part is, okay, so let's say I have a great price, a great offer, she buys it, I get them the results, but what if I can't sell to anybody else? What if there's no one else out there? What if it's the only person that I'm ever gonna sell to? What if it was a fluke? 
<laughs> have you ever said that? Have you ever thought that? You don't have to necessarily agree right here. I know it's a little bit of a personal question, but I want you to think, you know, is there anyone in your world that you can share this with? Because I know that this is something that has been going on for decades. And um, I know that's something that every single person at every single level constantly wrestles with. I've been in lots of different rooms with everybody from millionaires down to people that are making their first sale ever in their first business and they all wrestle with the same things. What if, what if, what if, what if? I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of, I'm afraid of. And the real core is, what if I'm not good enough? What if I sell this and I offer this service and the person gets results, but then what if, what if I'm still a failure? What if my business isn't gonna work? What if my family tells me I should go get a regular job with somebody else paying me because this entrepreneurial thing isn't working out? That's scary. And so we dive and we get into this spiral of all these questions and it doesn't help us get to the next person who actually needs you. And this is the story I want to leave you with. And it is this, the story of the starfish on the beach, right? I'm sure you've heard this one before. If you haven't, it's a story of a boy who's out on the beach. It's after a big storm and there's all these starfish on the beach. And there's this old man that comes up and he's like, son, why are you throwing those starfish back in the water? They're just going to die anyway. You know, what does it really matter? He's like, it matters to this one. <laughs> It matters to this one. So I encourage you to go deep into those fears, ask yourself those questions out loud, look them in the eye and be like, not today fear, not today. And get rid of that doubt, kick it to the curb by saying it out loud and saying, you know what? I'm gonna make a difference to this one, to this next person. So have a happy freaking Wednesday. I'm excited for you. Share in the comments where you are on planet internet. I can't wait to connect with you further. Join me with the links below. <laughs>